Hey guys, Britt here. Welcome to End Times Bible Prophecy. Make sure to hit the subscribe, like, and share buttons. Well, this past weekend, we witnessed something that I believe is outright evil. And I want to turn to this Bible verse to or these Bible verses to help us get an understanding of the times in which we live. This is from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. It says, You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. And I believe that is an apt description of the times in which we live right now. And I believe this weekend we witnessed something that was absolutely evil. And I know a lot of people would say, you shouldn't even discuss this because this is the type of attention that these people want. They want you to talk about this. But I would say that we need to stand for truth and we need to shine light on darkness and not look the other way or pretend that it's not happening because that doesn't just make it go away to pretend that it's not happening. People have been silent on these issues for a long time and that's why we're at the position we're at now. So we don't need to go that route. We need to point out evil when we see it. So what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about this Grammy performance this past Sunday. It says, this article describes it. It says, Sam Smith's Grammy performance is slammed as evil and satanic on Twitter. And again, I would say that's exactly what it was. And I'm going to put a link down in the description. I'll pin it at the top of the comments if you want to go and read this article. There's several video clips that you can watch. Not going to play those right now just because I, either you've seen it already and don't want to see it again, or if you want to see it, you can go seek it out. But I'm not going to throw it in your face. We're just going to discuss it today, point it out just in case you haven't heard of it and don't know of this already. But we're going to, I just want to talk about this. So it says, Grammy winner Sam Smith was slammed on Twitter last night for his performance of Unholy. That's a song that he's put together, I guess, during the Grammy Awards ceremony, which some call satanic. And guys, it is. There's, there's no way around it. People have been trying to pretend that this isn't the case. So this is the person he performed with, Kim Petrus, and that's Sam Smith. It says, Madonna, who is known for pushing boundaries, introduced the fiery performance, saying, if they call you shocking, scandalous, problematic, provocative, or dangerous, you were definitely on to something. During the performance of Unholy, Smith and Kim Petras both wore all-red ensembles, and mid-performance, Smith added a cane and horned top hat to his look. The stage had a wash of red light and gave out burst of fire where Petrus danced in a cage. Both artists were accompanied by backup dancers. Following the performance, Grammy's host, Trevor Noah, faked a phone call to his mom saying, No, Mom, it wasn't the actual devil. Yeah, you did warn me about Hollywood, he added. She says she will be praying for all of us. And then, of course, all these people in the audience are chuckling and laughing. Because it's so funny to worship the devil, <laughs> worship Satan, engage in these satanic worship acts on TV, and, and then you know that's what that is, and you mock it, and you make fun of it, which is what Trevor Noah was doing. It says, but Twitter did not take the performance as lightly as Noah. Many users labeled the performance as satanic and evil. Texas Senator Ted Cruz was one of the first to comment on Smith's performance in a tweet. He wrote, this is evil. And of course, like all news media, okay, he was one of the first. Well, one of how many? Because he was commenting on somebody else's tweet on it. I would say that she was one of the first. So it says Liz Wheeler, this was her, her tweet. It says, don't fight the culture wars, they say. And that's what we were talking about before when I said some people would say, oh, don't. Don't point this out. You're just giving them more attention. 
no, I realize that this is what they want. They want to get a rise out of people. This puts them on a bigger stage than they would otherwise be with the talent that they have. But we need to shine a light on darkness. And it says, meanwhile, so she says, don't fight the culture wars. They say, meanwhile, demons are teaching your kids to worship Satan. I could throw up. And she provides a video. Again, I'll put the link to this in the comments in the description if you want to go watch it, if you haven't seen it already. But guys, if if you're looking for a satanic worship song, I'm not really sure how this is any different. If you're looking for, to see uh, others worshiping, surrounding Satan and worshiping him, how would it look any different than what we would see here? And this was put on full display and endorsed by the Grammys, by CBS. It's, it's sickening. It says, what is Twitter saying about Sam Smith's Grammy performance? Twitter users are slamming the unholy performance, calling it a tribute to Satan. And of course it is. And here we have a, a Twitter, someone on Twitter that says, if as a Christian, you think we are reaching when we talk about the dominance and normalization of Satan worship and pop music, you need discernment. Sam Smith's performance at the Grammys last night was satanic. No, it's not art. It's symbolic of who they serve. And I agree 100%. There's a difference between if you have a movie where you're trying to portray light and darkness and you put you put together a piece of performance art and there's a difference between that and endorsing and promoting and pushing this as normal. When we read on it says I know we on the right probably use the word satanic too often, but this performance from Sam Smith is literally a tribute to Satan. And again, if you want to go watch it, go watch it. Here we have disgusting. I don't think I've ever seen a more demonic display than Sam Smith's performance at the Grammys. A horned hat bathed in fire and singing about doing something unholy while referencing Balenciaga dresses. And we've gone over in the past some of the evil that's put in the advertisements of that company. This is no coincidence, y'all. Satan is showing us who he is. So he's not trying to hide anymore. Satan isn't trying to hide anymore. He's out there, and people are willingly worshiping him in public. It says Sam Smith offers up a gr satanic Grammy performance, and it's in the open for all to see. Again, they're not trying to hide it. And then it says not everyone on Twitter considered Smith's performance evil. Some fans defended the singer. So here we have the Reverend E. Carrington Heath, who says, I'm a literal Christian minister. Sam Smith's song is called Unholy, and they created a piece of performance art around that theme. They weren't saying we should all be Satanist. Know what is evil? Kids being killed in schools, family living in poverty, racist hate, etc., etc. Well, <laughs> uh, evil is evil. This is Satan worship. I don't, I don't see any other way around it. You ask the performers what their intent is. They didn't say, well, we want to put a piece of performance art out there for the world to see, but we don't endorse that. No, they've made it very clear that they do endorse Satan. They do endorse all of this. Where does all of this evil come from? And the kids being killed in schools, it comes from Satan and sin infected in humanity, but Satan egging that on and convincing people, A, that he doesn't exist, then coming out into the open and getting people to think, oh, it's totally fine to worship Satan. Everything's fine. This says, Ted Cruz said Sam Smith's Grammy's performance of Unholy was evil. Evil is when a man walks into a school and murders a dozen children. Evil is when Russia bombs schools and hospitals to steal land. Evil is not when a musician dances around in a devil suit performing a hit song. And again, nobody's saying that it's not evil for these terrible things to happen in the world, but that does not mean that a man dancing around in a devil suit performing his hit song isn't evil. It is. This is 
idol worship, Satan worship. It is satanic. There's no other way. There's no other. Way. How would it be any different if you went out and said, I want to put on a satanic performance with people worshiping Satan? How would it look any different? It wouldn't. So it says, what has Petrus said about unholy? This is the co-performer with Sandsmith. It says, Kim Petrus, who became the first transgender woman to win a Grammy Award last night, said the performance was inspired by not feeling accepted by religion. I think a lot of people, honestly, have kind of labeled what I stand for and what Sam stands for as religiously not cool. And I personally grew up wondering about religion and wanting to be a part of it, but slowly realizing it didn't want a part of me. Let me tell you, Satanism is a religion, and it's clear that it wants you to be a part of it and that you are a part of it. Which they go on, it says, so it's a take on not being able to choose religion and not being able to live the way that people might want you to live because as a trans person, I'm already not kind of wanted in religion. So we we were doing a take on that, and I was kind of Hellkeeper Kim, said Petrus. And again, I would say that the Satanism is a religion, Kim, and clearly it wants you, and clearly you're a part of it. But God will accept you if you come back, if you repent and come to the Lord. The good news is that while we were still sinners, Jesus Christ went and died on the cross as, and spilled his blood to grant forgiveness of our sins so that we could be reconciled with God. So God's invitation is open to everyone. Just come to Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, not Satan, not Satan worship. But guys, none of this should come as a surprise to any of us. This type of thing has been going on for years, if you've been paying attention. And here this Sunday, we've got the Super Bowl coming up. I have no idea who's performing the Super Bowl halftime show, but for years, I've referred to it as the Sodom and Gomorrah halftime show. Because I believe if our grandparents, great-grandparents, past generations were able to fast forward and see these types of performances like we saw at the Grammys, like we see every year at the Super Bowl, like we've seen at the Grammys in the past and elsewhere, they would say, wow, this is Sodom and Gomorrah. This is what it looked like. This is what it is like. And think about that, guys. <laughs> we live in a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't, I don't, again, how would it look any different? How would the things going on in our society today be any different if that weren't the case? How, how would it be any different? When you expect the end to come, how would you expect it to look any different than what we see right now? And so make no doubt, have no doubt about it. God's judgment is coming. The tribulation itself is a judgment upon the world. And I don't know who said it. I've, I heard originally that Ruth Grant, R Ruth Graham said this years ago. I've never been able to confirm that, but it goes something like this. If God doesn't judge America, he will have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. And I believe that is correct. You know, what did Jesus have to say about the time before his return? He said, here's Luke 17, verses 20. 28 through 30, he said, And the world will be as it was in the days of Lot. People went about their daily business, eating and drinking, buying and selling, farming and building, until the morning Lot left Sodom. Then fire and burning sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. Yes, it will be business as usual right up to the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Again, we live in a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, we are provoking God's judgment. How would you expect it to be any different than what we see right now? When the end comes, whenever that may be, how would you expect it to be any different than what we see today? I wouldn't. And I believe we live in the season of the Lord's return. It's not just this is a sign that we see, but we see so many other signs we see the people back in the land, the nation of Israel as a nation once again. We see the Jewish people back in control of Jerusalem once again. 
We see the gospel being preached all over the earth. We see calls for globalism. We see the formation of the Gog of Magog Alliance in Ezekiel 38 and 39. We see all of these things setting up. We see technologies going out that set the stage for, that have the same function as the mark of the beast. We see technologies that allow the fulfillment of the prophecies in Revelation 11 about the whole world viewing the bodies of the two witnesses lying in the street. We see all of these things taking place and telling us this generation is unique. We are the generation headed toward the judgment of the tribulation, guys. There's no way around it. Jesus is coming back soon. When? I do not know. I do not know the day or the hour. But I know that Jesus said, when you see all these things take place, know that I'm near. I'm right at the door. I'm coming soon. Your salvation is near. He didn't say it'll be 100 years, 500 years, or if the people of the world repent like Nineveh did, then I'll come again at some other time. No, he said, when you see all those, those things, know that I'm near right at the door, and I take Jesus at his word. So guys, we don't have but so much time left. Jesus could come at any moment. The rapture occurs before the tribulation, which means Jesus is coming back for the church even before the tribulation. And we're already seeing these signs that the tribulation period is near. When Jesus was talking about a lot of these signs, he was talking about his coming at the end of the tribulation, not before it. He wasn't talking about the rapture. So if that's the case, then we know that the rapture is even closer than the second coming of Jesus Christ. So I believe this is just one more indication of the times in which we live, that we live in the season of the Lord's return. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you think this is just performance art? You're not going to convince me <laughs> otherwise. You know, you, you, you can read articles about what the intentions of these artists are, and to me, it's to worship Satan. So we need to shine a light on darkness. We need to be speaking the truth and letting others know about Jesus Christ, about the good news. And that includes everyone, even the people that participated in this Satan worship. Guys, the invitation is still open to them from Jesus Christ for however much longer we have. So no one is beyond the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, but we need to let them know that. We need to be speaking truth. We need to be doing the work that God put us here to do until there's no time left and we can't do it anymore. So guys, again, leave your comments below. Make sure to like and share this. Let me know what you think, and God willing, I will see you on Friday. Bye. If you want to learn more about the end times and Bible prophecy, make sure to sign up for my free monthly newsletter and get your copy of my free ebook, Seven Signs of the End Times. Just follow the link in the description to get your free book. Also, make sure to check out all of my books. Just look up Brit Gillette on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple iBooks, Google Books, Kobo, or anywhere books are sold. Thanks for watching today, and until next time, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith.